Hello and welcome to this film which is all about covalent molecules and more particularly about how we can use the structure of covalent molecules to help us explain some of the properties that these molecules have. Now it's important when we're doing this to understand the difference between bonds which are intramolecular and forces which are intermolecular and um, then we're going to try and explain some of the physical properties which a lot of these substances have but which unfortunately there's quite a lot of exceptions to. So anyway, here we are. Let's look at what molecules are, what a covalent bond is and try and make sure that when, we, when we're talking about molecules we're talking about the right thing. This is a word which is very very commonly misused um, in lots of different contexts really and when people start talking about intermolecular things they're talking about molecules and if, if they're not clear about what a molecule is it can lead to trouble. So a molecule is any two or more atoms held together by a covalent bond okay, or covalent bonds. Now immediately you realize that if that's what a molecule is and you're talking about intermolecular things or molecules when you're trying to explain the properties of say a metallic substance which doesn't have any covalent bonds then you immediately sound like you don't know what you're talking about. So be clear about what a molecule is and that hopefully will help you use the word molecule and intermolecular and molecular and things words like that that involve the word molecule in their correct context. It's also important to understand what a covalent bond is. Okay, now all the bonds we've looked at so far have been electrostatic attractions. In metals, there was a met an electrostatic attraction between ions and electrons. In ionic substances, there was an electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. These are no different, these bonds. They're also electrostatic attractions. In fact, all bonds in chemistry are. Okay. These are strong bonds, like ionic bonds. There's no point trying to decide which one's stronger. Okay, just think of them as strong. Okay, and a covalent bond is the electrostatic attraction. This is quite an important definition, even though it's not written on this slide. It's the electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and the nuclei of the bonded atoms. Okay, so that's what a covalent bond is. Now, in any molecule, as we've said, there'll be atoms held together by covalent bonds. These are within the molecule, so they are intramolecular. Okay? Between one molecule and the next, there will also be an electrostatic attraction, but it will be weak. And although some people call these intermolecular bonds, I think it's easier and less confusing if we call them intermolecular forces. And to kind of stick to the idea that bonds are strong, but forces are weak, okay? Although that uh, could be taken to mean something that would be obviously wrong in other contexts, um, like physics, for example. If we try and stick with the idea that intermolecular forces are weak, whereas any types of bonds, be they metallic or ionic or covalent, are strong, then we'll make life a lot easier for ourselves, okay? Now, in the solid or liquid states, it's really the only time that these intermolecular attractions operate. okay? Because if we turn a covalent substance into a gas, these molecules will be so far apart from one another and moving so fast that these they'll hardly notice these intermolecular attractions or these intermolecular forces. We won't break covalent bonds when we turn molecules into a gas. okay? But in the solid or liquid states, we've got these intermolecular attractions operating between the molecules and covalent bonds operating within the molecules or intramolecular okay whereas these are inter between molecules okay now bearing that in mind and trying to explain the sort of physical properties that we normally have to explain like conductivity and melting point um, things like that um, let's think about what the molecules look like okay now are they going to conduct electricity well so far we've seen things conducting electricity because electrons can move around well we don't have delocalized electrons here we've also seen substances that conduct when ions move around but there's no ions here 
Okay, so they don't conduct electricity. Covalent substances do not conduct electricity. There's one exception, and that's graphite, and we'll look at that in the film about covalent networks. But this is a film about covalent molecules. Okay, so there's no free moving charge carriers. Why am I saying charge carriers now instead of electrons or ions? Well, just because I'm being general about electrons and ions. I could say there are no free moving electrons or ions, but I'm sticking to this idea that. I'm trying to remember that electricity can flow not just because electrons are moving. So I'm being more general. I'm saying there's no free moving charge carriers. Will they have high or low melting or boiling points? Well, we tend to talk about boiling points here because um, when you melt a covalent molecular substance, you're not really breaking the intermolecular forces. But when you boil one, you are. You're, you're, putting quite a big distance between the molecules and so you're breaking the intermolecular forces. However, whichever one of these we're talking about, we'd expect them to be low because intermolecular forces are weak. Okay. If you're talking about bonds breaking when you're talking about the melting point or boiling point of a covalent molecular substance, you're going to be losing marks really because the covalent bonds do not break when we boil them. So it's not because they've got weak bonds in fact, saying that anything has weak bonds is probably a no-no in pretty much any situation. Okay, It's not because they've got weak bonds, it's because they've got weak forces between molecules. Okay, quite a short film again, um, but hopefully now you understand the difference between an intramolecular bond and an intermolecular force. There'll be lots about intermolecular forces in the high-level bonding topic. And um, you can explain some of the physical properties that um, covalent molecular substances often have um, in terms of their structure. As usual, any comments or questions, post them on YouTube or come and um, find me and talk to me about them.